Welcome everyone to the Paper Dungeons mini campaign, Between the Rows. Uh, change of change of pace. Um, I will be DMing, not DJ. DJ will be a player. It's going to be a great little mini thing. Um, <laughs> uh, I hope that everyone enjoys, both the viewers and the players. And let's get right into it. <laughs> Restless trespasser to a town of no rapport. A simple, lonely resting place far from distant shore. It's where people live their lives asleep, awake within the dreaming. But in silent, shattered memory, a shadowed force is scheming. For the dead await beneath the golden stalk and blackened crow. Yet mortal creatures never see what lies between. Uh, to start off with, we're actually going to begin with a little bit of extra character building. Um, I have given the players uh, two questions to kind of ponder over um, the past week or so. Uh, and they are going to finish their character creation here on stream. Um, the first question, I'll be presenting these in the order of Bailey, to Eugene, to Sawyer, to Bev, to Grant, and then to Jared. Um, in the past week to month, that kind of time period, your character has experienced a kind of strange happening, an otherworldly event. What is it? Starting off, Bailey. Well, would you like me to describe myself before my story? Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> let's start with that. Forgive me. Um, you guys start with your character intro, kind of like a little description of who you are and then go into your uh, strange happening. Well, my name is Bailey Patterson. And for as long as I can remember, I've helped my family out with our farm. My family's been here for generations, uh, probably since about the time this town started. And, you know, I care a lot about our farm. And someday I hope that I take it over and maybe raise my kids to do the same. And some people say that college is a good route, but for me personally, I think it's good to live a humble working life on my farm. <laughs> but about a week ago, something real strange happened to me. Uh, my, my grandparents, they, they tell stories of what to and not to do around the farm and around the town and some some stories from long ago and we've always been told not to go out during the time of sunset usually around eight to nine in the summer and the reason being is because it's bad for the crops and it's unlucky for the farmer you know that's when the night critters start coming out so we we never go out during sunset we try to get our work done in the day spend time with the family in the evening now about a week ago for one of the first times, I was running new irrigation routes through our field, digging digging some trenches and, and putting some irrigation lines in for the pivot. And well, I was almost done, and I knew that my family would want me there for dinner, but I decided to keep working. And I was out there a little longer than I anticipated, and it started getting dark. And the strangest, the strangest thing happened. Um, I, I could have sworn as I was out in the field make my way back I could have sworn there's something in that field with me there there was something behind me I, f I felt it and, and and I looked back and and when I looked I, I felt like I was looking at it straight on like I, I saw it but but I couldn't see anything if that makes sense but it felt thick I felt suffocated it was there and so I, I rarely run especially in the cornfield it's dangerous you see you can't see your feet but I, I started running and I felt it behind me. And, and and the strangest part 
is that I could have sworn that I heard my name in the wind. And the strangest part of all it is it was it seemed as if it was a different language, but I, I knew I, I knew it was my name. I just knew it. And and so I, I ran and I made it out and I made it back home. And I, I don't think I'll I'll ever stay out beyond sunset again. Might just be my mind, but 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 that just that just happened about a week ago. Alrighty, that is Bailey Patterson. Next up, Eugene Crowbar Jones. Uh, please describe your character and your strange happening. Right. So Crowbar, uh, he is a pretty average height kid. Not kind of just a little, just a little chubby. Uh, but he is always walks around in a pair of dirty jeans with a, probably a you know some variety of t-shirt that is also dirty, and some version of a flannel that is also dirty. Wearing usually a baseball cap to hide his uh, black grease hair from him working most days at the mechanic shop with his dad. On occasion, well, actually, I don't know. That's that's actually it. Actually, <laughs> uh, his the strange occurrence, though. And I'm sorry, I'm not speaking in character, but I, I, I don't know right. that's happening. Um, but recently. Uh, as the su- summer has begun, um, while working at the shop on occasion, I'll stare out and I'll see one of the buildings nearby on fire. And I, in a window, I can see my mother crying out for me. And then, th- th- then there's nothing. Well, that took a turn. Yep. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, I don't know any of these, so these are news to me as well. They're they're coming up. I'm being surprised with these every day. Um, next up, day, Sawyer Blakely. Please describe your character and your strange happening. I'm Sawyer Blakely, but most of the town knows me as the one Blakely girl. Uh, you can think of like a creepy Topanga, or. Um, like in a strange Phoebe Buffet. That's that's kind of my vibe. Um, but she can't blame me. I mean, I get it from my mom um, that is obsessed with the supernatural and magical. You know, I've been convinced I've had magic powers since I was 10. I'm probably a witch, but anyway, my crazy conspiracies and stretched out stories have given me the weird girl reputation, so... I strive to live up to it. Um, I have these tangled, unmanaged curls of blonde hair, these light green eyes, but I always keep them lined in thick eyeliner and dark eyeshadow just to add a little fun, you know? Um, I have an oddly pale complexion and I dress in layers of flowy clothing completed by combat boots and multiple sets of jewelry. (laughs) I always have at least two necklaces on around my neck and a ring on each finger. Um, as far as this strange happenings, which you know, I know everything. Um, I have this little hideout in the woods. It's pretty cool, but nobody goes there. So don't go there. It's mine. Um, one night after a storm, a tree had got knocked down by lightning and on the side of it, my name had been carved into it. And afterwards I'd hear whispers every now and then, but I don't know what they say and I don't know where they're coming from, but you know, nothing new. <laughs> this is great. I'm excited. Oh my gosh, That's yeah! amazing. I love that. Uh, next oh, up, uh, we have Bev Winchester. Please uh, describe your character and your strange happening. My name is Bev. I was born with blue streaks in my hair and a blue birthmark. I've always been drawn to the color, but I never did know why. I have blue eyes just like my daddy. Um, He wanted a son, you see, so instead of growing up playing with dolls, I played with guns and I made them for him. I do leather working and I make pistols for the shop. And um, I'm 5'11". I'm on the wrestling team at school, as you sure. (laughs) And... My strange happening is as I was doing my leather work for this week, um, you know, it's allergy season and I had to sneeze. But this time when I did, I made the whole power go out in my house. 
That's never happened before. I could have sworn that was a blue streak of something, but I was able to get the power back on, but can't help but feel like that had something to do with my sneeze. Excellent. Gosh, it's amazing. Uh, next up, we have the confusing name, Grant Johnson. Please describe your character and also your strange hat. Okay, my name's Grant Johnson. Uh, I was the star quarterback on the football team. I also uh, played baseball and I wrestled. Uh, never really wrestled with Bev because, you know, she's a girl and I didn't want to, like, you know, but uh, yeah, so moved on from that. Uh, yeah, I've just been kind of, I, I like to talk to people, like hanging out. Uh, my dad owns uh, a plantation out the way as my grandfather started that. So I'm going to be studying uh, ag sciences with a minor in business when I go over to the University of Nebraska. Uh, very excited about that uh, coming up this next semester. So that's going to be really rad. Uh, as for a strange event, it was kind of weird. Uh, I, just, I just got my new truck. Uh, I used some grab money to get my new truck, which was really nice. Uh, and I was uh, driving down one of the back roads, heading back towards town. It was at night. Uh, and there was a little bit of a, a storm. It was just starting to rain a little bit. And so I was trying to be fairly careful, you know, going like 65 miles an hour instead of like the normal 75 miles an hour. You know, so driving pretty slow and I was just driving down this back road when uh, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something walking out of the cornfield. It was really strange, it was really tall and like this black, had like a black complexion. Uh, so, but like super tall, I'm talking about, like, you know, like 12 feet tall with like these horns coming out of the head, top of the head and like his arms were like extended and it was just kind of walking, it almost looked like it was walking on like, like, talons like it had talons on its feet but it wasn't like a bird or anything like that it just kind of like walked out it had kind of like smoke blowing off it anyway like walked out into the middle of the road and i had to like swerve around it it actually like clipped the corner of my truck you can see it uh thankfully i had the cattle guard on the front so it didn't actually like dent my car or anything like that uh dent my truck which is super nice but uh it, it spun me around and i kind of spun for a little bit and when i finally stopped and dust cleared it was just i looked back out over it and it like looked at me and i felt like this almost like the static in the air. It was, it was, it was really weird. I, you know, my hair was sticking up on end and I, I felt like I was like gonna shock someone, you know, like when you rub your feet in the carpet, like you were when you're a kid, it kind of looked at me and then it just turned and walked into the other cornfield and disappeared from view. Anyway, I'm not one to like get scared about things, you know, I'm just, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't get scared about anything, but like that, that was, uh, that was pretty scary. Excellent. <laughs> um, last, but definitely not least, oh, yeah. uh, we have our lovable boy, Jared Thorne. Please describe your character and your strange happening. Hey, um, I'm Jared Thorne the uh, third. I very unfortunately um, had the grand uh, courtesy of also being on the football team, I uh, played wide receiver. Um, admittedly, I think I did more work than Grant, but you know, and it's for to be decided. Um, yeah, well, he, Grant, um, at least, or, uh, Grant and I are uh, pretty close in that regard, I guess, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. Um, Jared, me, I'm, I'm about six feet tall. Um, not like huge by any means, you know, I didn't really wrestle or I wasn't the biggest fan of lifting. Hey, honestly, it was a pain. Um, I have black hair and a kind of familial white streak that all of us kind of carry in our hair. Um, kind of the uh, the outcast within the in crowd, really. Um, I got invited to the parties, but I only really went because I, I mean, I had to save face somehow, right? Um, when I'm not, you know, trying to kiss ass, I... I don't know. I kind of, uh, I'm a fan of the arts. You know, I'm a writer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, 
my my family isn't really the most uh well put together probably the most uh blown up nuclear family you'll ever see but that being said i mean uh one particular night when it comes to the thing that's happened at least within the last month or so um my dad while being particularly drunk and a little extra uh you know venomous with his words uh i kind of frustratingly uh ran out of my house and uh being at like 1 a.m super late and nowhere else to really go i kind of went into decided to go on a walk uh in the woods by the elkhorn um and uh halfway through my walk it started to pour and uh, that was just my luck right but again anything better than going back to that uh hell of a place so i i kind of just kept walking and halfway uh after about a like half mile or so i started hearing these whispers and it was strange um Honestly, I don't know really how to describe it. Uh it was in this language that felt familiar, but you know, I've never really heard it before. Um I'm not entirely sure what they were saying, but I was being drawn by it. And I started following it it felt like it was calling to me and i'm not one to ignore a fan so i made my way over and uh the ground underway gave loose uh and i fell and upon my landing i found a folding hunting like hunting knife essentially like a oversized folding knife um and as soon as i picked it up uh the whispering stopped uh the knife itself has a ton of runes on it and ever since then things have only been getting weirder but that's probably the weirdest it's gotten absolutely stellar and now uh for the last question that i have for you guys this one is a bit harder to plan for um i'll go the reverse order uh choose another person in the party um you guys knew each other in freshman year pretty well but as time progressed you kind of fell apart you all went in your different directions still know each other you're still friends you just don't talk as much except i want you to choose one other person in the party and they can only be chosen once that you have a special connection with in some way um now mind you this can change other people's characters so if you say that they go with the Jared weekly to hang out and read poetry, suddenly your character likes poetry. Um, so this is fun for me because I don't have to do anything. Uh, so starting with uh, the end of the last one, Jared, what is your connection to another player? Um, as much as I would hate to admit it, um to this day ever since freshman year um when my dad particularly gets a little too abusive and everything really feels like it's falling apart i uh i still kind of sneak over to grant's house and he manages to calm me down help me out <clears throat> all righty uh, so Grant has now been taken, which is good. Grant, please choose another person. Awesome. So as Aaron very much described, my thing is that Sawyer and I have for the last several years been going to watch Jared perform slam poetry on Sunday nights. Um, this is one of our favorite pastimes. We'll always go and support him at the local bar as he uh, usually kind of tucked in the corner and not to make it too too big but we'll usually go watch him perform his slam poetry or one of his other things that he's written for the crowd that night that is absolutely stellar so 
Um, Bev, Grant and Sawyer have been taken. Hmm. Oh, well, uh, I was going to pick Sawyer, so... <laughs> Ha! This is this is why you don't premise in your choice. You just see what you get. All right. Um, Bailey Patterson has been my neighbor my whole life, and his family and my family have been here for as long as we can remember. So for family events, for holidays, well, our families will have dinner together. And as much as I may not like hanging out with people a lot of the time, <laughs> um, Bailey's not so bad. You darn too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, next up, Sawyer Blakely. Currently, Bailey, you, and Grant have been taken. Okay. So it's Sawyer, yeah. Ooh, I could go with the obvious or the not so obvious. Live your dreams. Um. You know what? I've been having quite a fun time pestering Crowbar, uh, trying to convince uh, him about all my little stories. He doesn't believe most of them, but I always bring one every day. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love all that. All right. Uh, next up, Crowbar. Uh, currently, the two remaining are Bev and Jared. Oh, 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 hey, hippie. Um, well, back in junior high, when the uh, incident occurred, most, I should clarify, first two years, you guys all remember how I was usually the one picked on by the football players or the rest of the football team, the jocks, until junior year, when that all changed, when I got my name, Crowbar, when the, fu the bullying stopped. And sure enough, those football players didn't know what happened to them. But I always appreciated Jared. Because he... Because he seemed to be the one who didn't judge me too harshly for it. Excellent. Now, Bailey, you are left with only one choice. Bev Winchester. You guys chose each other! Yeah. You were each other's lobster! <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, I like the simple side of life. Um, I like having a humble abode and a good, hardworking people around me. And well, Bev comes from a family who's simple and who who enjoy the hardworking side of life. And I I don't know if there's anything there if there ever will be. Um, you know, she's probably the closest thing that I've ever found to somebody who might pair well with me so I, I just keep that in mind I try not to do anything that's obnoxious or out of question but that's uh that's been on the back of my mind for for a while now oh my goodness I this is great Yay. I absolutely everything now <laughs> now that everyone's characters are fully made and everyone has their little inner communications and and nuances and stuff all figured out uh, I'm going to start into the campaign um, so, our story takes place, um, 2008, May. All of you have just recently graduated from, um, the senior high school, uh, just a, maybe three weeks ago. So it hasn't been too long. Um, you're all trying to figure out where to go in life. Um, some of you are going to college, some of you are going to work. It's a real time of change for you. But, as we all know, recently something strange has happened. Um, all of you encountered something otherworldly or something that you can't explain. And ever since that has happened, every night that you've woken up um, sweating, uh, you have come to know something or learn something that you didn't know before. Some of you have a belief that you can do something or perform some kind of magic. Of course, Sawyer has always believed that she could, <laughs> but now there's physical proof of it. And it's honestly getting a little scary. 
Um, sometimes these dreams that you all have at night, um, you see events that you were never a part of. And at first you think that they're just dreams, but you begin to see things in them that you can't just pass off. You begin to hear um, voices, not just the regular, regular uh, voices that you have been hearing that have been teaching you these things, but also the voices of other people, people that you know well. Um, and you come to notice that these voices are some of the other people in this party. You can even see some of them in these in these strange visions that you have at night of great battles of darkness, people with swords and like a bow and arrow, things that should not be around in 2008. Um, <laughs> but you see these warriors that are beside you, they have the same faces as your friends from freshman year. Um, and as you wake up on a lonely Saturday, um, the sun is just beginning to come out, a few clouds in the sky. Um, you all ended up having the same dream last night. Um, it was a dream where in a very Avengers fashion, um, you were all back to back and you knew that the people beside you were the rest of the people um, currently in the Zoom call. <laughs> uh, as you wake up on that Saturday, you are hit with the general feeling that you need to do something, that something is terribly wrong, but you can't put a finger on it. So, as teenagers in 2008 did, you sent out a group text. <laughs> uh, you have sent out a group text um, to the rest of these people. Of course, you still have their numbers. Um, uh, and you guys have generally decided to meet up at the local Tasty Snack, um, a little homegrown uh, ice cream shop uh, that sells some strange burgers. Um, that was your regular meeting place back in freshman year. Uh, and that is where we will start off today. Um, you all enter around the same time, I would assume. Yeah, I see your hand up, Grant. I was just going to say that Jerry and I would arrive together as Jerry doesn't know how to drive, so I would have gone yes. and picked him up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you guys kind of filter into this little, kind of like, one of those little like side of the road kind of restaurants with the kind of musty old tables that are from like, the like 60s um, and sit at your usual corner booth and that is where we will start off this is the first time that you guys have really been together since freshman year how's it going oh. guys yeah did everyone else get the text I don't know if I don't know well we're here stuff. aren't we well yeah but like did did everybody else like have Okay, weird, weird, weird shit's been going on, is what Grant's tr probably trying to say. Let's be real here. Well, I don't know. Sawyer talks to me all the time about weird stuff, so it's not really new to me. Yeah, well, but, <laughs> I mean, come on. We oh. we kind of we kind of ex expect it from the Blakely. Let's be real here. Hey. I, now you watch I, the way you talk to her, Jared. I, I... Am I wrong? <laughs> Sawyer can say things about herself. That's just fine. I, watch what you say about her. That's totally fine. And I don't mean it in any offense, Sawyer. I'm going to be entirely honest. <laughs> I let's, listen. My shouter will curse you. <laughs> now that, I believe. So, <laughs> so, here, so here's the weird thing, though, is that honestly, with everything that's been going on lately, I'm not entirely sure that that's so far fetched. I've been telling you guys this stuff for years. I, I would like to say that I did, in fact, have a dream last night, and uh, all of you were, in fact, present in the dream. Um, I would like to state that. And are we all on the same page? Yeah, we were. We were. Yeah, we're all like back our back. us, but not us. The like bows yeah. and so it's like I go, I go bow hunting, but like these were like old bows, you know. Yeah. Right, right. Well, isn't this nice, all us being together in one place at the same time? Sure. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. As you're having so... this kind of simple conversation, 
um, kind of talking over like this weird dream thing. Uh, you hear the the little bell on the door, kind of, uh, yeah, kind of ring throughout the shop, and a woman that uh, some of you know, none of you know incredibly well. Uh, Jared, you probably know her better than most. Um, uh, comes through the door, her hair all up, tucked into kind of a bun, um, a messy, like, blonde bun. Uh, she has a stack of papers and push pins, and she goes over to the cork board and pushes them. Um, Jared, you know this woman as uh, um, Larissa Larson. Uh, she is Timothy Larson's mother. Uh, Timothy is a member of your poetry group um, that uh, that all shows up after hours at the roller rink um, yeah, on every Saturday and prep for your Sunday Smash Poetry meetings. Um, she seems troubled. Hey, uh, Mrs. Larson. I wave her down. Oh, oh, uh, hi, hi, Jared. Um, hi. Oh, oh, it's, uh, wow. I haven't seen this this group together for well quite a while. Um Yeah, let's go uh, up Mr. Larson. The, the peanut oh, gallery has gathered. Well, it could be it could be a bit better. Um what what's going on? You look troubled. Well talk about it? Timothy Timothy went out last night and he uh, he hasn't come back yet. Um Timothy uh, Larson? Yeah. Was, was he hunting or no, no. I don't know. He said he was going to go ha- hang out with some friends. I. He always comes back, at least by one. How about that? Question: Is this a? Is this a? What? What day is today? Uh, today is a Saturday morning. Saturday. So, so it's a Friday he night. Wouldn't have been going to like a poetry meetup. Nope. No. Um, yeah. Saturday evenings are when your poetry meetups are, Jared. Sundays yeah, yeah. are your poetry slams at the at the local bar. Yeah. That's that's really unfortunate. I uh, I was really looking forward to see what he had written up recently. I. I, I well, I, I, I don't think we have... should panic. I mean, have you tried calling the friends he was supposed to be with? Maybe he just stayed the night. I don't have I don't have his friends' numbers. I he I don't. <sighs> Timothy has never, ever been out past 1 a.m. He always comes home. DM. Yes? Do I know who Tim hang out, hangs out oh, with? Oh, yeah. Uh, Timothy Timothy doesn't have a whole lot of friends. Yeah. Um, he he kind of gravitated to your poetry group because mm. anyone who doesn't have a whole lot of friends uh, <laughs> goes to the poetry group. Um, uh, minus you. Uh, yeah. Timothy, Timothy's a good kid, a little shy. Uh, poetry was always uh, pretty happy, though. It was more upbeat compared to the rest of your guys's. Um, but his mom isn't wrong. You you remember all the time, like you guys would hang out at your poetry meeting until three a.m. some nights. Every every time anything like that happened, he would leave by twelve thirty. Mm. Okay. Um, well, I you do know, know Miss Larson. They they did put in a new skate park in town and. I've seen a lot of kids around there. Maybe, maybe he's hanging around that part. Bailey Patterson, have you been on your skateboard again? <laughs> I haven't done that in many years. <laughs> I, I couldn't risk getting hurt and not being able to help on the farm, you know. Mrs. Too. Larson. <laughs> yes, um, I'm sorry for the uh, life of me. I can't yeah, remember your name. That's cool. <laughs> um, anyway. Name is Sawyer, Mrs. Larson. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sawyer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you want me to like cleanse your aura for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? And cleanse your aura. You're like really stressed, and it's starting to affect mine. Can I like? Um. Uh, Mrs. Sh- Sawyer. Or, Mrs. Sawyer. I, just play I along guess. with it. Just play along. Oh, it's not a okay. game. She's so sorry. Anyway, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up and I'm just gonna start walking around her, picking at things. <laughs> uh, she she kind of like looks at you a little. She's like, "What is happening?" Well, well, I'm sorting it out. Life. You're gonna feel better. I'm not phased. This is <laughs> this is Sawyer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Mrs. Larson. I'm not, it, yes, not to try and sound, you know, any 
anything like that, but you have alerted the authorities, right? I tried to, but they said that I couldn't turn in a missing persons report unless he's been gone for at least three days. Well, yeah. how about that? Well, would you like us okay. to check it out for no, you? No, that, that's like actually that's a like thing. That's like actually a legit like, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, no, I thought I it was 24 hours. No. Yeah, I don't know how uh, police how work. Certain, but... certain states have different... Well, it's three well, days here in Rock. Long, how so old is well. Tim? How old is Tim? <laughs> oh, Timothy, uh, he's a year under you guys, so he's around uh, 17. He's almost 18. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say, yeah, if he's an adult. Senior year, senior year was the greatest time of my life. I went to state, and all through my sports. It was great. I had girls all over me. It was oh, amazing. Wow. Wow. Grant, you haven't great changed. Grant. You haven't changed a bit since last time I spoke to you. Well, Mrs. Larson... Would you like us to go asking around for him? I mean, I know, well, Jared, are you still doing your poetry that you always do? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, if Tim's gone, then I think we should probably focus more on that because admittedly, um, he was the only one that didn't write depressing poetry. <laughs> and well, honestly, that's kind of how I want to end my night most most Saturdays. I was only <laughs> asking if you still do your poetry, because last time I remember, little Timmy Larson was doing poetry with you as well. He was, he was. Um, yeah, if you want, um, do I have most of the poetry? Oh yeah, on clubs, speed dial, like, you have a group yeah. chat. Yeah, I. You also have your MySpace pages connected. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna send a mass. Yeah. I'm gonna send a, I'm gonna send a text to all of them, be like, hey, have you guys seen Tim? <laughs> um. Yeah, you send out a quick text, and uh, Mrs. Larson says, "Well, I, th I thank you for whatever you can get done. I've I've got to go finish hanging up these posters. Uh, if you see anything or hear anything about him, um, my number's on the paper. And Sawyer, I actually think it did help. Thank you. It always does. And I <laughs> you have a in. nice day, Mrs. Larson." Yeah, you you all do as well. Um, and she kind of heads out, and you see her pin one another one of the papers to the uh, uh, telephone pole outside, and then bustle down the street. Is I'll I'll get up real quick and go over to the flyer. Does it does it look like she has a bunch of like her phone numbers? Like, like a tab? Like tear off no, tabs it looks or... like she probably went to the local library and printed this out about an hour ago, and it is not well formatted at all. There's like. It's it's just the name. Have you seen Timothy Larson? Because she probably <laughs> couldn't figure out how to get his picture onto it. Right. Um, right. Oh no. Can we? But take there's a only like twenty three hundred. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, your phones okay. have some limited picture quality. You probably have some like blackberries and razors right now. Well, yeah. You know yeah. what? You know what I'll do. I'll add it to my contact oh. list. Uh, Grant, That's you actually cool. do have an iPhone. They just released a year ago. So hey, you have um, the new I'll iPhone. Take one crappy photo, and then I'll add her phone number to my phone. Yes. Um, uh, and then yeah. I'll go so back in and slide in next to Jared. Yep. Hey Grant, I just noticed you snapped a picture. What is that thing? I've oh, never this, seen that before. This is the new iPhone. It's pretty rad. I'm gonna it touch out. it. I, touch I what? It. Where are the buttons? But yeah, like it, they're all. On the thing, there's like the one home button, and I press that to turn it on. But I'm gonna touch it. You just, it's all touch screen, you know. <laughs> so you just press no. the Google Sawyer. You can check it out. But I'm with one, hold it. one drop on the floor, and that whole screen's just gone. Well, yeah, it would be a shame. Sawyer. Hey, Sawyer. 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 SB, you know, come friends, on. You know that? We're, we're good friends. Don't do this to me. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, so, I, I, I cry. Grant, do you, do you no. mind? If, Grant, do you mind if I take a look too? I promise uh, yeah. I won't drop. Um, <laughs> Missing child, well, everybody... new iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are just graduated from high school. <laughs> it's true. Priorities. Uh, speaking of missing child, maybe while we're like looking around, maybe we can go to where you guys would hang out for poetry. Yet. We're assuming um, that you're hanging out with Jared, them. So you get a response on your group chat. Oh, well, never mind. Um. Uh. Currently, uh, the only person who has responded, um, is. Uh, you're, you're uh, currently your kind of second in command. Um, uh, good old Jason. Um, uh, he no longer goes by his last name anymore after, uh, well, you know, things happened. Um, he's just Jason now. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, um, so edgy. <laughs> like small it's town, you've got to have like twelve real edgy ones. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> if you ever watch Letter Kenny, we're the know? skids. Just... Yes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Jason uh, kind of texts and says, uh, "I know where he was. Uh, meet me mm. at the rink." Hmm. Very good. So, uh, I'm sorry. How's the um, BLT? <laughs> it's, uh, I'm grown. Um, admittedly, just as bad as I remember. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, but, have, you have to go with the shakes. The shakes are good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, so it looks like Jason actually just texted me. Man, this is thick. Um, Jason? Yeah, yeah. He's one of the, he's one of the, um, Sawyer's oh, gonna crawl across the table and like look at his phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I hold it out so that way she can read it. Um, uh, it guys, says he wants to meet friends. up at the rink. So, uh, do you guys want to head over? I say we just hop into Grant's car. <laughs> now, now, oh, hold on. Well, before, I can before sit we in the go, bed. Before we just go scampering off, we are here because we all had some strange dreams, right? Well, yeah, let's talk I about learned, it on the way. Yeah, yeah, if I fine. learned anything about my dreams, it, it does mean that we should hang out again, at the very least, if we all had the same one. Clearly, we're meant to do something together. Maybe Timmy's got something to do with that. No. Right. We have not excluded the fact that Sawyer could have just, like, done some things to us and had us all hang out again. Well, we regardless... Prepared? Well, if okay. Sawyer did do that, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe we've it's been too long since we've all been together. Hey, as much Sawyer as I could totally out. do that, I didn't. Yeah, I was going to say, Sawyer, Sawyer's been talking to me all summer. She, I haven't noticed anything strange exclusively from last night. That's just what she wants you to think. All and right, weird stuff, stuff right. Crowbar. I've been telling you about it. Yeah, Let's well, just yeah, get but... in the truck. Hey, uh, Crowbar, you... Sure, you've been hanging out with Sawyer if you didn't see anything strange. Well, <laughs> all right, I, all it's right. been at my shop. I'm kind of working on other things while she keeps yabbering. Uh, <laughs> yabbering. I'll, I'll slide all out right, and start all right. towards my truck. Yeah. I start as well. That's enough. Lay off of Sawyer, you guys. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I oh, we love Sawyer. Right, and I'll go. I'm sorry. I. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Crowbar. <laughs> Go ahead, crowbar, crowbar, please. I was gonna ask Mr. DM, is it reasonable yes. to think since I work at a mechanic shop, can I actually technically probably have the best car here? Uh, no, no, okay. Uh, normally you you have like the souped up, like um, Eater. you've put a lot of work into right. your car. Uh, he just has the new. So car. in terms of like speed. You could probably win just oh, about okay. any that's, race. That's what I wanted. 100%. That's what I wanted. You definitely but, have the fastest car. Yeah. yeah. Grant Johnson, just recently with his graduation money, uh, just brought a <laughs> brand new, um, like, like, twin Chevy. cabin. We all know like, damn well it's a Chevy. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a Ford. It's a Ford yep. S250 wow. dually. Wow, well, that's controversial. The... <laughs> yeah. um, bright red, cherry red. Um, it's massive. A, it's what I thing. could afford. I anyway. Well, I go over. I go over to my car. I pop open the trunk, and I grab my toolbox. Yep. You never know. You never know. Good um, choice. So yeah, right. you guys all kind of pile so, in. Now you might yeah. all be able to fit in the in the cabin. I'll sit like, in the bed of the trunk. Sawyer's going in the bed, <laughs> well, and she's just gonna I, stand arms open, ready I to would, go. I would <laughs> actually prefer to drive separate, and maybe have someone with me. We can. Take my truck. I'll go me. with you. Sounds oh, you, nice. you could go, Crowbar. That's all right. <laughs> right. I, I, hey, just Crowbar, walk, I just walk, walk over. I just walk over and grab shotgun. And I have an old, like, rusty, like, faded red Chevy, uh -huh. smaller <laughs> farm yeah. truck. Yeah. And, yeah. and I look at Grant and say, now I notice you got a new Ford. It's quite noisy, and I get in the truck. <laughs> okay, cr All right. question, crowbar. Did you get Did you get in the shotgun seat of my car or in Gra no, uh, Bailey's? Bailey's car. Okay. Oh, dang it! Yeah. Uh, Sawyer is standing in the back yeah. of your truck I, right now. Before, I duck yeah. under Sawyer's arms. Yeah, to get quick. In quick thing. Before, while we were leaving, um, I, um, 
I turn around and I go, I look at the person working the counter. Yeah. And I just go, hey, just, you know, because I think we should probably at least ask around a little bit, seeing as apparently Miss Larson also didn't do that. Um, you haven't seen a boy about like, yay, tall, you know, 17 years old, Timothy, you know, him, probably not. But you uh, know. The person behind the counter is named Mr. Hankel. Uh, um, he's ran the Hankel. shop. Is, His is family's it, ran the shop for years. Say, is, is it Hankel's <clears throat> bar? No, this is a, this is tasty snack. Oh, I see. Um, although he, <laughs> he has worked with the local bar, which is just, um, <clears throat> it's the moonlight bar. Um, uh, and he he's currently washing something. You're not even sure because everything that they like give to you, like they don't have plates. It's just like foam plates and cups. So you don't <laughs> even know what he's washing. Um, he's just standing there and he goes, "Oh yeah." Um, Last uh, night, particularly. Oh, Timothy. Uh, no, no, not not round. Didn't stop by here none. Uh, can't say I have recently. Uh, All right. Well, I mean, I I suppose I see him every once in a while around the uh, around the roller rink on Saturday nights. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, admittedly, for not much, but I appreciate the the input there, Big Boss. Well, anytime. Now, you and you and your friends. Now, you 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 have a good day. You, hear you know me? the yep. Um, food's just as good as it's always been, and I. <laughs> well, <laughs> I thank you for it. <laughs> 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 and I uh, I walk out. Um, before I get into the side of the truck or like the the shotgun, um, I'm going to like stand up onto the wheel and I go, "Hey Sawyer," mm. um, and I like I like nudge her on the shoulder. And I'm like, "No hard feelings, all right." And I now Sawyer, I do think at least I'd feel more comfortable if you sat down next to me. I don't know how safe it would be if you stood. You in the can bed. hold on to my ankle. I want to be a bird. Alrighty then. Oh my goodness, I love this. Lydia. Is the I hold thing on. I've ever heard. I hold on to her uh, legs, nice and tight. <laughs> As we begin to go, I'll start by like I'll put the car in neutral, and then I'll rev it up really like loud, and then I'll just gently put it into into drive <laughs> and just slowly take off, so it's yep. not like sending Sawyer flying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, of course, you know, you don't want all you also use a new truck. You don't want to hurt it too bad. All of you That's do true. see you know, the cow guard. A bit. Um, the exactly. cow guard on Grant's truck is like bent. It is dented mm -hmm. a solid like three inches in. Hey. Um, yeah, it's like touching my light now. It's hey, yeah. Hey, Grant, do you need to take your truck into shop on day two? Uh, yeah, that was. I hit a cow. I mean, that's the whole point of the cow guard, so I figured it didn't really need to get fixed, but I... I'd hate yeah. to see the cow with a dent that big. I know. I. It's not great. I was driving home. Did, it was, did it was, you just it leave it on the side of the road? Last week. Let's make like no, a cow no. and move. <laughs> you <laughs> have, she does have a point. We're just kind you of like sitting here. You pull out of the little gravel parking lot, uh, Sawyer, the wind blows <gasps> oh your hair. It God. does actually... It was a beautiful morning, barely a cloud in the sky. It is now overcast and gray. Yeah, um, sounds like as the weather is in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the I'm wind is starting on. to pick up. Yeah, I'm holding on nice and tight to her legs, using yep. all my strength um, so she's safe. <laughs> and you all begin to head towards the local roller rink. Um, the roller rink, as Bailey mentioned, has just recently had an addition um, added on to it, which is a small skate park. It's maybe the most exciting thing that has happened here for like 20 years. Um, nice. There's officially like five people that use it and they are ecstatic. Um, <laughs> nice. Nice. But yeah, you head through uh, kind of these like little paved roads throughout the street. There's one large highway that you don't take uh, that travels through Rock Creek um, just because, you know, even you guys aren't dumb enough to be going like 75 with Sawyer in the back standing up. <laughs> um, yeah, not right now. She's Maybe you do actually like her. A couple years ago? I don't know. You were crazier back then. Um, <laughs> True. Now we're wizard. Yeah, now you're old. That's um, fairly strong. I'm sure she'd be all right. Yeah, she'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, so you head through this uh, small little town. You pass a couple things. In the distance, you can see there's a massive old abandoned factory. Um next to a little cattle yard. Um, you can hear the trains. There's kind of a train uh, 
like railways that run through this town as well. Um, it's getting towards around 10 or 11 o'clock as you pull up to uh, the local roller rink, um, blasting some now a little bit dated uh, 90s and 80s songs, uh, just a little bit dated, not a lot. Is the is there, <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with this truck that you mentioned. Is there one of those windows in the back that opens oh, yeah. so you can see through the bed? All, All right. right. So we can hear the music then? Oh, yeah. We sing along. I sing along. Uh, yep. Um, you pull up to the roller rink, <laughs> jiving out to, I don't know, songs. Um, <laughs> it depends on whether or not Jared has access to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. That that's entirely up to the driver. Well, technically, right? Crowbar took shotgun, so Jared. Oh, would that be is accurate. Oh, uh, oh, I took no. shotgun. You took truck. shotgun and Bailey's. Oh truck. no, no I'm Jared's behind, definitely dude. got the music then. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, it is like literally it is the last album that My Chemical Romance has released. <laughs> 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 um, crowbar. Bailey. Crowbar. What do we got? Do we got uh, Mama and? Uh, <laughs> Nice. Get, yeah, we oh we we got we got the lot of it playing right now. You guys are Crowbar and I are definitely one hundred percent listening to country with the windows down. Yep. Here, here. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So so oh, yeah. so Bailey, I've been meaning to ask actually, how's your truck been running? You 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 brought it in you know to the shop a couple months ago. Has been doing it's been doing all right so far. Well, as you know, this truck we've had this truck for ever since my father really started working out at the farm and. It hasn't really failed us yet. Sure, we need to fix stuff every now and then, but this right here, and I tap it on the dash, and I'm like, this thing, it's all it's all working man needs. I don't need a new <laughs> fancy Ford or nothing like that. I got my old trusty. I mean, sh- yeah, this is this is hard country steel right here. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's hard country steel. I would give it up steel. for the world. Yeah, you American sure enough. Made. Um, you finally pull up to the roller rink. Um, they are currently open and it's actually semi in use right now because it's you know it's a saturday kid got nothing better to do school's out um what else is there to do in a small town but skate like you've never skated before i help Um, sawyer out of bed um as soon as we stop i pat bev's head and then i like hop out and start skipping (laughs) <laughs> I take a moment where I'm like, you know, maybe this is really good. I, I sure didn't miss her, and I get out. Um, I'll, uh, she I'll spin around and I'll open the door for Jared. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Um, Not at all. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna. I'm anyway, gonna, I'm gonna pull out my tool belt and, and 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 start pulling out tools that I think might be useful at some any given moment. You never know. Now, Mr. DM, is it fair to say I have a backpack with all of my tools as well? Oh yeah. Um you right. also, if you would like, there is a definite chance that under your flannel you do have a, Oh, absolutely. A concealed carry. I never leave without it. <laughs> She's got a license, probably. It's fine. I, mean, okay. um, I have my She's been educated. Bar. I don't need anything else. She's taken her firearm safety courses. She's been certified. Yep. She's good. She knows that red she, is oh, safety he's been and shooting bad. since red she was eight. Kill what we don't, he what practically we don't know, ran the exam. What we don't know is she also has her hunting rifle in the backpack. Oh, well, yeah. It's yeah. true. I mean, she, she can assemble it in, under, like in under five seconds. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, unas- it's disassembled, yeah. Um, But you guys head in. Uh, sure enough, uh, manning the desk is. Um, a high school student, you know him as Devin. Um, Jared, you see Devin all the time. He's he actually worked with you guys a lot to allow you to um, have like your after hours poetry club meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, but Devin see, sees you guys come to, come come in and he goes, "Wow, welcome um, to the Rock Creek Derby. Uh, I mean, roller rink. Sorry, wrong <laughs> night. Um, oh, yo, Jared. Uh, hey, Big D, um, how's it going?" <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that got me for a second. That came out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, uh yo, JT. Um, yeah, no, sick, rad. Uh that's a uh, busy, uh, busy night um, tonight, yeah. Oh yeah, um well it, I mean it's day. But yeah, uh it's gonna be pretty busy, uh I think tonight, uh, you know, kind of first couple weeks off of uh, school. Oh, yo, you brought the rest of your friends. Uh hey, how's it going? 
Uh, my name's Devin. How's it going? Uh, people call me Big D. Um, yeah. Devin, you know me. We took English together. Oh, yo, yeah, Beth. Yo, how's it going? It's um, good, thank you. So, uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, Jared, I think your friend's uh, waiting in the back room. Yeah, uh, yeah, He said yeah. Uh, he was, you know, he was like he normally is. Uh, but yeah, uh, so he'll, he'll be waiting. Uh, do the rest of you guys want like a pass or something? Um, we mm-hmm. have skates in the back. Uh, uh, what's your shoe size? Nah, It'll be, nah, uh, nah, dude. Oh. Um, we're Maybe just... later. We, uh... Five and a half. Oh, sick. <laughs> um, I'm an eight, size eight. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. Uh, yeah, okay, give me just a sec. Uh, the rest of you all? I'm, uh, I'm gonna go, I, I, I into go the back room. With Jared. Yeah. yeah, I am not skating. <laughs> oh, sweet. Um, Can I well, just have the skates and then go with them? I mean, yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, yo, Jared, are they? Are these guys, like, part of the poetry club now? They're cool. Sick. Um, well, normally, like, after hours, uh, like, you can use all the skates you want for free. Uh, but, you know, you guys are first new entrants into the poetry club, so, um, y- you know, sure, here, uh, m- my boss doesn't care anyway, uh, so here, and he goes and he brings out, uh, your skates for the ones who asked for them. He's Thank like, you have a great fun at the rink. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, s- bye. <laughs> and then he just stands behind on. the counter. <laughs> I'll put mine on, too. <laughs> Why not? Uh, he just kind of like looks at you and he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Jared knows where the back room is, but it's like that, that way. Past, uh, go, get like, over here. We got uh, <laughs> Bye. I'll be, I'll be here. Yeah, yeah dude. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll uh, bye, catch David. you later, man. Sweet. Yeah, don't. Uh, uh, totally sick. Don't uh, hurt something. Yeah. <laughs> b- bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I love he, pulls, Devin. he pulls out a game <laughs> board and starts playing something behind the counter. Yes. That uh, guy yeah. says too many words. <laughs> I, know, like, I think I think he's probably one of the most literate in this town. <laughs> Oof. Um you know, uh, Jared, you have always had the assumption that he really wanted to join the poetry club, but yeah. was always a little too embarrassed to do yeah. so. So he just kinda hung out outside the room. Um mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you guys head to the back room. Uh, originally, it was supposed to be a storage closet, but they have enough storage closets, and they didn't really know what to do with this one, so it has currently been rented out to the Poetry Club for, actually just for free, because they just, you know, they don't have anything better to do with it, and it's after hours. So they've kind of decorated it themselves. You can see there's some, like, poetry of the month on the wall. Um... Uh, Jason and normally actually comes up with the that. Same Edgar Allan Poe. Oh yeah, it's just it's just the Raven. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just the Raven. Just the Raven, <laughs> <laughs> been the Raven for the last the... two weeks. I've been yeah. asking them to change it, but they just don't. <laughs> um, there has only been it just alternates between the Raven and um, oh the the Telltale Heart. Those are the only yeah, two. Yeah, Telltale Heart one. Yeah. yeah. And the Telltale Heart isn't even poetry. So you've no, always been confused as to how it got onto the onto the wall. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah. Jason really likes it. Uh, but you see, sure enough, uh, speaking of Jason, sitting in the back behind the foosball table um, uh, that has all of the little soccer players missing. Um, so it's just a table with random rods. Um, they just haven't gotten rid of it because they keep saying that they're going to fix it and never do. Um, uh, sitting on a little folding chair uh, with long black hair down to about, about mid-back level. Um eyeliner, a black lipstick, pierced yeah. ears. Jason is sitting in the corner and he looks up and he goes, so you brought friends. I did. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot you had any of those other than us. You know, b- believe it or not, I was like on the football team. You realize that like, I, I only ever you really into that like in crowd stuff sometimes. Yeah. Listen, J- man, Jason, you you know us like Sawyer and I come watch you guys every Saturday, like or every Sunday. Even like <sighs> I don't know you. You would J- never really know me, Jason. Oh, jeez, Jason. Do I need to wait outside? No, you're you're okay, <laughs> Bev. Hey, Jason. It's okay if you can't handle it. 
Hey, um, Jason, can you <laughs> quell the demon a little bit? Like, what the demon hell? Demon will never what be demon, quelled within demon? my soul. Wait, what? Eh, don't worry I'm, about it, Sawyer. I'm just, I'm just gonna move on from what you said, but I would be careful with the way that you speak to me. Can, can I just... speak with literacy and and grace? <laughs> Unlike you. <sighs> Mr. D. Oh, you wanted to know? You wanted to know where Timothy went? Yes. Well, yes. Uh, I don't mean to say that it came from beyond the grave, but I heard some tales through the grapevine, I guess. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Are you saying that Timothy might be dead? I mean, he might be, but aren't we all maybe already dead? All right. What are you um, going on about? I Tell like us where he is. My patience is thinning. Can well, you just so get right to the point? With the state of the economy. <laughs> That's right, I was an economics major, or at least that's what I'm gonna be. This, this is the start of the recession. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> just 2008. I, uh, just I heard that some of, uh, I mean, you're Crowbar Jones, right? He looks past uh, the rest of you to see. Eugene, you, you've noticed that one of the lights, uh, light switches is stuck and have actually yeah, disassembled I've, it from the wall. I was gonna say, I, I <laughs> by, by now, I would have found something that I would have been fidgeting or yep. tried to fix. You're something. really frustrated at the whole foosball table thing because you can see the little people. I am. And like, you could, to like, t like two minutes and a couple of screws and you could get these back yep. together. Um, but he's like, yeah, you're, uh, you're Crowbar Jones, right? I, uh, I think some of your friends from junior year were hanging out with Timothy. Um, I heard they went down uh, to the old factory uh, last night. You know, like one of those situations, but... God. Did you get wind of what they were doing? Well, what else do you think they were doing at the factory? Clearly it was some kind of dare. You know that that place is just wicked haunted. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Jason. Anyway, Jared. Oh, no. oh God. I hope that you don't uh, miss out on tonight's meeting. I I had never. We'll be, of it. be going over the writings of, uh, well, the usual. Yeah. And are you yeah, prepared I, I, for Sunday? I I have a wide array to choose from. Well, good. I won't lose to you this week, though. Good luck with Sounds that, buddy. Very sexual. I'm sorry. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Jason. He looks past and he goes, you, "Wait a second. Oh, Sawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you around since well a while. How have you been? Pretty great, Sawyer. You could do better. I've noticed <laughs> that your aura is a little bit messed up." Is everything all right? You know, uh, the God people are talking to each other, speaking the language of their people. <laughs> <laughs> By you know, now, I'm a little tense, but I'll be fine. Well, for all of you, except for Grant, I guess, don't go getting into any trouble. Right. Okay. I'm gonna hey guys, do you hey. want to leave? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'd leave. like that very much. Actually. I'm quite uncomfortable. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Sawyer's on her skates, just like in place. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I got my skates too. I'm just kind of as as I turn to leave, I'm just gonna like slowly start pushing Sawyer. <laughs> Bailey Bailey looks to Bev and says, "Now be careful now," and starts sta sta uh, starting off following Grant. You know I've always been good on my skates, Bailey. Oh, oh I remember. Saucy. <laughs> um, you hear, uh, you hear Devin in the background say, uh, it's, uh, fine. I'll have the spirits to keep me company. They're the Let only ones who truly understand. Let me know if they say anything. Oh, I yeah, will, Jason. Sawyer. You'll know. Okay, all right, so I'll know. Know. Right, Mr. Right. GM, real, real quick. Yes. Could I, just to see, I don't know if it'd come up but you know, you never know. Can I actually, in the process of fixing the uh, the foosball table, could I actually purposely like uh, unscrew one of the the little the little guys out? Oh, easily. 
Just make one of them a little loose. Yeah. That's easily within your ability. Okay. Um, but yeah, you guys head back out and uh, good old uh, front desk. Sorry Yo, about that, guys. I I hope that you guys had a great time at uh, the roller rink, the Rock the Rock Creek uh, roller rink. Um, I need your skates back though before you can go. Right. Um, I, I, put my, I put my I put my arm right. on Bailey's shoulder as I take my skates off. I just hold my foot out for somebody else to do it. <laughs> I start taking her skates off. <laughs> I go out to Bailey's truck. You guys have a um, a great day. Uh, by the way, uh, skate park free to use. Um, just uh, you know, bring your own like skateboards and stuff. Uh, we don't supply them yet, um, but I'm working on it. Uh, great. Thank, have, thank you. Thank you. Have, have a. Have a great day. I think Bailey's really Goodbye, Drew. He seems, Goodbye. He seems like he's wanting to Yeah, I think I think Bailey would like to go down to the skateboard. Uh, uh, no. I'll tell you I, what, Devin. I, I if you, you get know, us a skateboard, we will make, they make sure that Bailey tries out the skateboard. Yeah, you could for always real? wear uh, knee yeah, pads and a helmet, Bailey. They have I, it's been now. a long time. I really Bailey I is a tough protection country boy. He doesn't need no uh, knee pads or anything. I'll like pat his head. <laughs> well, Grant, why don't you go try it out then? Why don't we all? Yeah, well, there is a missing, missing like, child. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should make it trip <laughs> down to the factory. Wait, like, there's a missing crazy. child? Like, bro, what, that's like crazy. Like, what's going on? Old Timmy Larson, you know? Timmy Larson? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, like, yeah, whoa, bro. Timmy Larson. That's, hey, that's crazy. Larson. He was just here like, well, like, no. No, he wasn't. That was like a week <laughs> ago. Sorry, it gets really confusing the whole time and stuff. That's like, right. how I'm it like sure, runs, like, I'm like sure time does. Come awesome. in here. It just doesn't stop. Definitely. Yeah, like it's always going, man. Like, what, what, does crazy. time still move well, while you're asleep? Like, wow. Why don't we go down to crazy. that factory? Oh, the factory? No, not you. Dan. I mean, I get oh, off my no. shift well, in like an hour. No, no we're gonna no, go I now. Think, you stay put. I think we got it, Devin. Oh, Do what? If that's, we it's back just up, a little. It's a little we'll time you know. pressing, so well, we don't want to rush you with your job. We'll we'll just go now. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll just yep. be here. Oh, I think okay. you know. I've got a. Uh, uh, yep. I've got, yeah, I've got stuff to do. Right, right. Catch you later, buddy. Yeah, uh, I've only 100% of this game three leave. times by now. It's fine. As everybody goes to leave, I'm going to stay behind. I'm just going to be like, hey, hey, Devin, come here. Y- yeah? Okay, listen. I want you to come with us. Okay. Because oh. I know how much of an asset you are. Here's the thing. Everyone else, they can't do anything. Okay, but you, you are the eyes and the ears of this operation. I need you on the lookout. If you hear anything about Timmy Larson, you let me know, okay? Bro, I, dude, I will be <laughs> your guy. I am so your guy, dude. I, I am. I, I will. I will. I will be here harder than I have ever been here before, and I will. <laughs> I and I will continue to increase the amount of being here that I am. And you Bro, would. and then I'll I'll give him like a classic like clap and then pull him into a little thing over the counter. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the awkward like yeah, yeah. dapping it up with him, voice. Like, <laughs> kind of like freezes and he's like. <laughs> and then I'll just like, uh, <laughs> oh my god, that is him. so cute. I love him. <laughs> uh, he he does say he's like him with us. Yeah, Grant. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm just saying like, next year. I've always, I, like I've never made it onto varsity. At that time, Jared walks in. It, and he goes, "Hey, big man, we got to get do, going. Come do on." Do you have any? Do you have any tips? Um, yeah, I'll I'll talk to you. We'll get together. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sawyer's back in the truck. Bye. Bye. I duck under her arms and I assume my position. Yeah, um, guys, I'll, guys, okay, we should quick. hurry if I'll, we're gonna go to the factory. Yeah, real quick, one second, and I'll run into my truck and I'll grab a football and then I'll close it. And I'll run back inside. Oh my goodness. Here, you. Practice with this. That's the first step. Dude, bro, I'm at varsity of the wrestling team, but I if you think that I can make varsity football, I am in. And he takes it and he just chucks it across. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's like, oh. perfect spiral. I knew it. You were so right. I'm a natural. I was so in varsity this year. Yeah, yeah, dude, you got it. I totally believe in you. Um, I'll talk to Coach Jones um, and we'll get it all taken care of. Dog, that would be so helpful. Like you Sweet, are the dude. coolest person I have ever seen. Uh, yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, I gotta go. Like I said, you're the eyes and ears, bud. Uh, you're gonna make eyes it on the varsity. Eyes and ears, <laughs> and maybe one day feet on the ground, ready to be there. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. Uh, and I leave. Awesome. I'll. Goodbye. 
<laughs> you guys get into um into your respective vehicles you you get into the regular yeah um and does bev heading... manage to get in with bailey this time Ooh, that's a good question i mean i was going to hold sawyer's legs but if he asks me nicely i might sit with him I did not ask. I did not ask Bev. I was too nervous, and I didn't want to make. <laughs> <laughs> Do I notice um, this? Uh, Making. What's your passive insight? Passive insight. Ten plus uh, three. Insight. Ten plus your insight modifier. Yeah, I know. Fifteen. All oh, right, you're not. You're not Bailey. Fifteen. <laughs> um, you've noticed for the past. I don't know. Ever since you've known Bailey Patterson, freshman year. Yep. Um. Uh, for the past four years, he's always kind of been a little strange around Bev. Mm. Um, it hasn't changed any, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like you do see him, like like everyone goes to get into the trucks, and he goes, and then just gets into his truck and turns <laughs> on. Uh, City in shotgun of his truck as he gets in. Uh, do you do you, a do big you, green do you, tractor? Do you, what, do you need to go talk to Bev? Uh, wh why would you? Why would you say that? Well, well, I noticed. I noticed you. You seemed to want to talk to her for a second, and and then you and you didn't. Well, it, it's been a while since we've caught up, and she's been a good friend of mine for a while. So of course, I mean, I have things to talk about with everybody here. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, an awkward silence ensues. <laughs> Uh, punctuated only by the occasional twang of a guitar and a how how, um, <laughs> you guys drive the roads. Um, guys, side to... content: Aaron's country album coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would pay for that. Bottom of, of a whiskey bottle, <laughs> <laughs> and my dog died. Um, you're, you're on the right track there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you guys head down um, some small little uh, back roads to uh, what was previously mentioned uh, in the beginning. Uh, there is an old abandoned factory. No one knows what was what this factory is for. Some people think it was it was probably a food processing plant at some point in time. <laughs> um. The, the the name on the side of it has been worn down for years. Um, you can see that there is like a single S uh, that is still barely visible. Um, for slaughter. Yeah, could be. Who knows? <laughs> it was a Bryson um, Food Company. Spooky. Right, right. Could be. Uh, but yeah. Uh, also, right next to it, there is a um, a cattle yard, which is kind of a strange combination combination of things. But in reality, it's really not. No one pays any mind so to it. Was, Why is it like there? Like I said, it was slaughterhouse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things happen. Um, cows, food. Cows are food. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, this, you know, this factory, it's kind of been the, like, the high school, like, hey, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. Let's go explore the inside of the old abandoned factory. Right. Because kids right. are idiots. Um, <laughs> some are. of you, uh, some of you may have even been, uh, been in here before, uh, Eugene, you remember, uh, freshman and sophomore year, it was actually pretty common for you to get like picked on by kids and forced to like, like on a dare, like go in and bring something back from inside the factory. Yeah. Um, this whole Timothy vibe that like, that's the kind of vibe that you're getting. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, you pull up a towering massive like warehouse huge huge factory you can see some smokestacks in the back obviously it hasn't been ran for years um the there is supposed to be a fence around it but it is it's basically just poles where a fence used to be because there's so many holes in this fence that anyone could walk <laughs> through it um most of the glass windows are either fogged up or shattered and boarded up um Definitely a safety hazard. Mm -hmm. Definitely a safety hazard. Um, yeah, sure enough, you pull to the little gravel like parking area outside of the fence um, behind the building, so it, it isn't really easy to see you. No. I Are go there, to uh, help Sawyer here? out. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? I was asked if there were any cars here as well. Um, 
Can you please make a perception check for me? And I'm helping okay. Sawyer out of the bed of the truck. Yep. Kind of Again, just... jump. Yep, she uh, almost like catches your waist and just kind of like, <laughs> oh, nice. and sets you onto the ground. <laughs> nice. I got a 15 for that. 15. Um, you do notice that there are, um, there are like tire marks in the gravel, like something had been sitting here overnight. It rained a little last night. Um, okay. So there's a bit of a divot where um, tires were, but um, there aren't currently any cars or trucks here. Oh, okay. uh, right. as I step out and see the others, I say, now we might not know what we'll encounter in there. If it is actually dangerous and Timmy got himself in some kind of situation, we might want to make sure that we have the right assets in order to achieve what we need to in there if there there's something that happens and i i open my back door and pull out my old worn out louisville slugger which i have used faithfully in most of the town's ball games i just I'll reach I, into I, my truck and in pull out a... my brand new louisville slugger <laughs> <laughs> in a playful not at all threatening manner i lift my flannel and i show what i have not in a way to where like you be careful now but more like i got myself covered i kick open the door and i <laughs> to to grant's truck and i'm like mama ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and i like take out the pocket knife and i like spin it in my hand and i'm like Don't worry, i think we're all covered Sawyer sticks her hands out wiggles her fingers and then balls them up into fists <laughs> <laughs> Crowbar um, pulls out a crowbar. Yeah, I, I, just, <laughs> I just pat my crowbar that's on my hip at all times. Classic. Faithful is true. Um, the, the clouds above you have begun to increase. Um, they're now a much darker shade of gray. Um, no thunder or lightning yet, but uh, Bailey, just off of a base glance, there's a storm coming. Now, do um, they look like hail clouds where they have a bit of a tint of green and they're like billowy or are they not more like... quite more of you're guessing probably thunder like like heavy thunder and, and rainstorm. All right, um, guys, it looks like there's a storm coming. Uh, no big deal. We just got to like, stay mindful of it. I quite like storms, if I'm being honest. The rain is quite soothing. I do agree. Chip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just started uh, walking. Yeah, sure enough. Um, the vibe in this area is, as any old abandoned buildings are, there is kind of this just general feeling that you get while you're around them. Uh, kind of a feeling of like silence and emptiness. Um, mm -hmm. Old buildings always kind of have this feeling around them, but it is especially present in the factory. Mm -hmm. um, even just the grounds around it, uh, the closer you get, it almost seems to tower over you, these giant um, pillars of smokestacks. Um, you think that probably even the like the base entrance, like the main garage door entrance, has to be at least 120 feet tall, um, like minimum. And that's around the shortest roof that you'll find here. Um, Sawyer, or wait, no, it was Jared. I saw your hand move. Um, yeah. How dark is it in the factory? Uh, well, right now it's around, you're hitting around one or two um, in the afternoon, just with the driving and the talking and whatnot. Um, so the sun is still out, but because of the clouds, it's a bit dimmer. Yeah. Um, okay. Inside the factory, there are points where it would probably be pitch black. Okay. Oh, I forgot my flashlight. And I run back to my truck and grab my flashlight. Go, yeah, do I have a flashlight? Oh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> um. As we start to walk into the factory, I assume there's an entryway, right? Somewhere. Um, some, something weird that like passively happens that anyone walking behind me notices, which Jared very much just kind of like walks in nonchalantly, like he doesn't really care. Um, for some reason, the general area around Jared just gets slightly dimmer. <laughs> like everything just gets like passively dimmer around him for whatever reason it's probably just the gloom and doom vibe probably always um yeah there's 
there is definitely a similar vibe to Jared as there is to this building of this kind of like, <laughs> kind of just like lonely emptiness. Um, almost like the building almost feels like it's waiting is, is the term that I would use. You're not sure of what it would be waiting for, but it's just kind of that like, it's waiting for something. Could be people, could be something else. Um, Mr. Yeah, you head in uh, to uh, the the main entrance is there used to be a locked door um, that was like majority glass, but the glass is broken and it hasn't been boarded up yet. So you can kind of just crawl through the bottom um, into the main factory area um, where all of the like packing and shipping of boxes would be. You can see that there are conveyor belts um, that no longer function but run into like random areas of the wall and disappear above you. There is a ratty catwalk. Um, Definitely not up to code anymore. (laughs) Um, There are a lot of points in time where the catwalk just ends. Like, it's not like it's broken. It just ends and there's just nothing else there. Um, The air is stale there's no wind in here even though the windows are broken they're high enough up and so few and far between that even with the wind from the growing storm outside um the dust remains almost completely unsettled um or completely settled not unsettled that's how dust works. <laughs> um you can see that there is a little bit of staining from like water leakage um from the roof and just the all around like windows and, and doors and stuff on the outside border um but yeah, it's eerie is the word I would use. Uh, Bailey, Bailey already. Uh, everybody walks in. He has his flashlight and he yells, "Timothy, you in here?" Um, your voice echoes throughout the facility, almost growing louder as it continues because everything in here is completely silent, which is a it's a strange feeling for most of you because out here in the country, there is never silence. There's always the wind blowing or um, crickets and other like uh, cicadas cicadas and stuff, um, chirping and buzzing, um, birds singing. There is nothing in this factory. Not a single sound is made other than um, your breath, Bailey's voice echoing throughout the um, building and the sound of your footsteps on the cold cement floor. Well, if you didn't hear that, I don't know what he will hear. Um, You do see that there are a pair of double doors that lead into the rest of the factory. Um, And there are some stairs that lead up to the catwalk and probably a second floor. You said it's pretty dusty in there. Oh, yeah. Is there, like, any new footprints or... Please make, um, I will allow investigation, survival, or perception. Whichever one you would like. Could I help her with that? Yes, you may. As we kind of start looking around a little bit and walk deeper into the factory, I go, Timothy, come out and play. That's not disturbing. It's like, let it, like, echo. (laughs) Uh, 17, you said? Um, You do see some... Uh, in the dust it has been disturbed and it appears like it was heading towards the stairs that lead up to the second floor Um, yeah Jared your voice just like Bailey's echoes throughout the building it almost seems like it gets a little bit distorted in this like massive echo chamber Um, it's almost Uh, like the voice that comes back isn't yours I'll go over to Jared and I'll punch his shoulder and be like hey don't do that why there's nothing in because here. Because, if, but if he is in here, that's not going to like make him feel better. You know, I that's mean, just going to be creepy. Okay, listen, you're just being a little oversensitive now about him. He's a he's a grown boy. He's got this. Sawyer's going to start walking, following the footsteps. Yep. I'll follow her. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> uh, Jared, as you're as as Grant kind of like punches you on the shoulder and you start talking, you almost do begin to hear those same whispers as you approach these stairs just in the back not formulating any phrases or sentences just a light hissing almost in the back of your mind let's go Shh. hey guys huh what what do you, hear you guys what, hear nothing what did you see what 
you see Wait, something? You don't hear anything? Uh, I heard you echoing go against the walls a couple seconds ago. No, I didn't oh hear God. anything. Um, okay, never never mind. Never mind. What? Did you hear something important? You better no, tell No, no. Um, honestly, it's probably just all in my head. Got it. Can I ask what everyone's we'll try to keep perceptions it are? 14. 14. 16. 14. 12. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type mine in the chat just so it's okay. easier to see. 12. Excellent. Uh, I just need to know uh, for no specific reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you um, had, do you guys, uh, sorry, you head up to the second floor? Mm -hmm. I followed um, her. Yeah, there's, it's kind of a mini, like, square staircase that leads up to the second floor. Um, plastic steps that have been warped by time. And when you actually step on the first one, it, like, bends and it pops. Um, and this loud echoing crack um, shoots across. I'll uh, don't hand step on that one. To make sure she doesn't fall if she, like... Oh, yeah, it's just a little, like, it's almost like a popping a... a like a like a packaging bubble like all one right. of those plastic all packaging right. bubbles it's just a little bend in the plastic that makes okay. a snap when it pops down well, watch your um, step now you about scared the bejeebers out of me mr dm if i may from from my past experience do i remember any places in the factory in particular that had interesting stuff in it I honestly, I was so used to the DM being DJ, I thought you weren't talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Could you please repeat the question? So, crowbar, yes. <laughs> from, from my past experience of being here uh, against my will, um, do I remember or know of any spots in particular in the factory that had interesting old rusted stuff? I mean, there's gross stuff all around. In the main, like area where you are right now there's not a whole lot mm -hmm. but in the rooms past like you can find like there's some like random old furniture like desks and chairs there are fire extinguisher extinguish uh, extinguishers all across the ground um rusted and old uh you remember when you were like freshman sophomore year whenever they would uh, tell you to bring something back you've brought back um like random old machine parts um like the said fire extinguishers you even one time you found like the bottom half of a little like uh plaque for excellence um that had been like up but had broken and fallen off and been lost um there's a lot of random things you do know that the uh the second floor is the least taken care of okay. which is most likely where you'd find like stuff to bring back okay that's where i was that's how i was wondering yeah, you as, all walk. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, as everybody else starts to go forward, I'm just going to grab Jared's hand for just a second and pull him back. Um, hey, are you you okay? Okay. <laughs> as, You're not as, sure as where he got a bagel. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. he finishes. Then the I'll, as, as he doesn't say anything, I'll give his hand a little squeeze and then let him go. I admittedly, Jared doesn't say anything. He kind of just brushes you off and like, keeps walking forward he doesn't yeah. say much um the whispering grows only a little bit louder as you head up the stairs jared um uh you can't still can't hear anything that they're actually saying like most of the time when you hear these whispers it's teaching you or telling you something mm -hmm. but uh it does have this kind of emotion of urgency um but you head up to the second floor um and enter through another one of those um kind of uh, just bent open doors, um, barely functioning. Yes, Jared? Um, really quickly, so s since I, I, it's been a minute since this has happened, like admittedly, like yeah. I, I've, it's pretty on and off for about a month. This has uh, been pretty like semi-consistent. So um, I uh, <laughs> kind of under my breath, I, in one of the tongues that it taught me, I, uh, more specifically for DM's sake, I, in Abyssal, um, I question it and I'm like, 
What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, the whispering does not respond. It just continues this hushed, like, whoosh, 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 okay. um, in the back of your mind. Great. Um, so you head up to the second floor. Um, the second floor, uh, the main door that uh, leads into a separate room, um, the back end is kind of the packaging facility, um, the garage door where all of the trucks would be loaded and everything would be onto that. Um, the room beyond that is another, it's an even more cavernous room. Um, uh, the floors are tiled. Um, you are actually kind of on, there's a large, like, kind of a functional catwalk um, above the whole area, but um, there are stairs leading down, and this is where the actual, like, working of the product would be. It would then be sent through the conveyor belts into the main room where it would be packaged. Um, uh, Eugene, you know this place, and you actually could guess, most likely judging by these machines and stuff that are here, this was some form of meat packaging plant, where uh, Grant was pretty close with his suggestion of a slaughterhouse. Um, this is where the meat would be carved up, and everything would be correctly portioned, and then separated and packaged, um, and then put into boxes and sent to the other side to be shipped. Um, oh yes, Sawyer, you leaned forward suddenly. We're just gonna lean over to, to Eugene and be like, this is probably where they killed him. Remember that story I told you about? Yes, I remember. Uh-huh. <laughs> you all hear this, definitely. In this cavernous room, it's hard to- Build who? <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I, I do not think we should talk about things like that right now in this situation. Maybe let's keep the stories until later. We're all a little scared, jumpy. Bailey? I- I'm not scared. I'm concerned. Don't worry, Bailey. There's nothing to be worried about here except for your ghosts. Well, and there I is a missing We can person, talk to them so. if you want. All right, all right. Leave him alone. Let's just I, find this. Uh, let's just find Timothy. It's all as, as everyone walks forward, I step back and kind of like nudge Grant. I go, and like, Grant, for the first time in a while, you see genuine concern and fear in Jared's eyes, and he goes. Are you 100% sure you're not hearing anything? DM, am I 100% sure I'm not hearing you anything? You are. You could not be more sure. It is impossible no. to be more sure that you are right now that you aren't hearing anything. Um, are you hearing things? Maybe. I don't know <laughs> if it's... I don't know if it has any merit, if I'm going to be entirely honest. Well, but, that's just, it's really funny because I've been hearing things too, and I, 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 I didn't want to say anything because I, I, I didn't want to be. Don't, hearing. okay, okay, yeah, don't. But like, but, what, yeah, okay, like, like what, like what? They're mostly just like, it's like just this thing, like, I just hear it, and like, it feels like it's brushing past me and like whispering something into me, you know, like, kind of like, I don't know, but like, it's really weird, and it's, it's telling me things like, about like usually it'd be describing scenes or like situations that I that it says that I'm gonna end up in and it's really kind of weird uh, so yeah right my um remember how I told you about like the thing that I hit yeah yeah yeah, yeah I um kind of started like around then by the way like you can definitely hear them whispering. I was, I was, I was gonna, gonna say, say. <laughs> we're in the middle of like uh, there is no other sound yeah, no, here, so um, you just hear Jared and Grant like. You can totally hear them whispering. Hey, like, Jared, you know. I hear that whispering you were talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I immediately take one step back from Jared. Um, Jared, uh, admittedly uh, yeah. a little disappointed, just keeps walking forward. Sawyer's actually going to skip over to Jared. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sawyer. You know... I hear whispers too. <laughs> Jared, like, yes, you can hear. Jared, uh, Jared kind of leans in and like meets her eyes and goes, "Oh yeah, and what did they tell you?" Um, I don't know. It's kind of garbled. What are they telling you? They teach me languages. 
What languages? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, kids. I, kids, <laughs> we we got a task at hand. We should probably right, stay right. Up. Missing kid, stay missing kid. Top. Anyway, no, okay. don't worry, baby. Let me it's sense if I feel any energies, and she's just gonna stand there for a minute. Uh, you feel a lot of energies, Sawyer. Your aura is connecting with um, the surrounding. You can feel the spirits of workers that have died and returned to the old, the place that they knew best. Um, surrounding you. Um, you can't hear what they're saying yet, but you're sure that with just a little bit more practice, you could. Okay, let's keep going. Um, sure enough, Eugene, you know the layout of this well. Um, this catwalk, uh, it was mainly used by like managers and stuff. Um, there is a there is a doorway up here that leads kind of into the into a managerial office, mm-hmm. um, but down below you the room actually continues on. It is a massive massive like work area that probably takes up the majority of the facility, and you can find just loads of stuff on the ground. Well, if he was looking for something, this would be the place. Um, do you go through the managerial office door, or do you head down into the, like, working area? I go into the office, actually. I follow okay. with my light. Follow, too. I'll start um, to follow him, and just before we enter the office, I'm going to stop, because my head will get really, really dizzy, and my vision, like, goes way out past, and I'm going to do a divine sense. For the Excellent. Time. Um, mm. yeah, you, this, your head hurts for a couple seconds and you kind of squint. Um, you don't see any creatures, but okay. you can tell that the floor below you would be considered desecrated ground. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right. no. Makes sense. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, but Is you guys head into the, into the manager's <laughs> office. <laughs> Um, there is a kind of turned over sideways desk. Um, uh, hey, hey, Grant, you, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I pat him on the back. I'm like, come on then. Um, there is a, there's a little, uh, broken bookshelf here that does have a single, uh, kind of like moldy manila folder on the bottom shelf. Um, uh, there are nails in the walls where clearly like pictures would have been hung or anything else like that. And a very uh, small boarded up window to the right that leads to the outside. I'll pick up the manila folder if I can. Uh, yeah, it it is moldy, kind of falls um, apart in your hands as you do so. Um, but inside it does say um, uh, like finance sheet and then there's like a list of like um, like assets, liabilities, like all these things mm-hmm. um, listed out. Uh, you can tell that this uh, probably should have been shredded, but by now it's so unimportant <laughs> that uh, it's basically useless. Do, do, do I know, have I ever been into the manager's office before? Oh yeah. Yeah. Is, is it always looked like this turned over? Oh yeah, it's always been kind of turned over. You never, you don't know how exactly it happened. Um, you don't remember a Manila folder being here, but that was like two years ago. Right. So it may have been here, and you might have just missed it. Um, yeah, it's everything in here. It's it kind of has that like, why are there random like desks turned over? No one's been in here. No one knows. No one questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, really quickly. Um, while we're kind of in the manager's office, uh, Jared's going to peek out the window. And, uh, as he does, he's going to like, kind of absentmindedly in abyssal, um, mumble, come on, Timothy, where are you, man? And Um, as he does, um, he unknowingly casts flock of familiars Ooh. and um one a, a bird appears in the window and he's just kind of like looks at it and it like looks back at him and he's like it's a raven yeah and he's like 
Can I help you? And it's going to go fly away and it's going to scour the area for Timothy. Yep. Um, meanwhile, there are two other rats that are scuttling now in the manager's office, leaving the office to check other areas. Yeah, you guys don't know where these rats came from. Um, but there's some beefy rats and they just skirt out the door and head down the stairs. Um, Jared, as you are kind of peeking out the window through these like boarded up slats, mm. uh, you can see into the stockyard. Um, can you please make a perception check for me? Oh, I'm terrible at these. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's a five. <laughs> Oof. Uh, yeah. Um, stockyard. You can see some some lights are turning on, um, in the far off, uh, like little town area past the stockyard. Um, the storm is progressing, but uh, just as much as you would expect it to. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing else catches your eye. Now, do you guys see anything that might be pertaining to Timothy's whereabouts in here? If not, we can move on. Um, off the top, uh, just going off of your passive perception, you think that the door might have been opened, but you don't think that anything was taken. It's kind of already been pretty picked pick clean. Yeah. I don't see anything personally. It's probably a good idea to keep going. All, All right. right. We grabbed one of the rats. I could try and talk to them. That's actually... I would be careful around the uh, the wildlife <laughs> around here. We don't know what kind of diseases they might carry. I don't know what I, kind I of diseases that. I carry. That's very fair, Sawyer. I just would be careful with directly touching them. I have no problem with being close to rats. However, I, I did see them run out. I, I don't know if they're any nearby anymore. They're gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of as Jared turns around, his mind slowly recedes into the um, eyes of the bird. Um, what does the bird see? Uh, the the raven flies above the factory that stretches out. Um, from a bird's eye view, it feels like for miles. Like, it is a big <laughs> factory. Um, uh, you don't see anything of... Well, actually, could you roll for the bird's perception? Sure. <laughs> What's the bird's perception modifier? That's a I great imagine. actually. I can actually find it real fast. I'm sure it would be higher than than Jared's natural. Yes. Well, I'm <laughs> <minor> blocks <laughs> easily. <laughs> While Jared's like wow, I'm rolling eyes, like does, trash. Does he look different? Um, you do see um, his eyes close for a moment as he's as he's standing there, um, but just as an outward appearance, he doesn't look terribly different. Okay. Hey, 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 DM. Yeah. Can instead of using my roll, can I just use my passive? Because <laughs> sure. use, let, can let I just use the bird's, bird's passive? Can I just perception. use the bird's passive? Because I roll, I'm rolling like trash. I'm not do using it. this dice anymore. It's fourteen. <laughs> fourteen. Um, you do notice. Um, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, but you, the bird swears, and you since you're looking through the bird, you swear you can. It's like something moved in the cattle yard, mm-hmm. but if you fly closer, there's nothing there. Almost like a shimmer or a mirage. That's not okay. Uh, while while uh, he's doing that, I'm just going to lean over to Sawyer. Hey, Sawyer. Do you uh, have any... Uh, do you have any concerns if something were to be considered desecrated ground? Would that be like anything of importance to you? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't really know how, but I'm like 98.7% sure that the floor of the factory is desiccated ground. I'm surprised you can count that high. Um, yes. How do you know that? Um, I just have a feeling, uh, it could be nothing. But like, I wouldn't fight, say it's you know? nothing. Well, I'm weird not, stuff's been happening. If if I may, I'm not surprised. I mean, have you seen? Have you like just look down? Like, have you? Do you see all the stuff down there? It's creepy. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah I sense like a lot of souls around here. Uh, Sawyer, you would know 
from your research. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of times when desecrated ground ground is mentioned, but most often uh, you know desecrated ground as there are a lot of different types. Sometimes it could be um, a grave that has been. Um, messed over. with or disturbed or built over anything like that um but the big thing that all desecrated ground has in common is that it is it is most often the hunting ground of restless souls and spirits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so if i'm adding things up correctly which i always do um and this is desecrated ground and i'm sensing a lot of souls um <clears throat> Maybe, maybe we should hurry up whatever we're doing and um, get out. All right, I have no problem with that. Um, okay. Um, well, then let's keep moving. I is mean, there let's, something? Let's go ahead. Is there something we should know, Sawyer, before we proceed? Oh, like if if um you feel something or like another energy or you see something, um, just let me know. I hit it with that crowbar. Uh, I'll be sure to do that. Yes, Jared? Um, Jared, while this is going on, I assume Jared's still, like, receded into bird brain. Yeah. Um, bird brain. <laughs> uh, and he, Jared kind of just mumbles, uh, cattle yard. And then absentmindedly continues to recede even farther down the food chain to rat brain. <laughs> Full rat brain. Um, and Are you walking while this is happening? No, he's right? literally right. just standing was, there with his eyes say. closed. All right. Um, you do I think your Jared goat, might be Jared. possessed. That it, he shows signs of it for sure. Um, now, we're all little spook. Let's not be thrown around terms like possessed. Uh, but he looks it. What do the rats right. smell, Dia? Oh, what do the rats smell? The same smell as you do, this kind of musty, dusty smell. Uh, it smells more damp to them. And the reason being, you sent them down the stairs to the like lower uh, desecrated ground floor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this room has these large metal, they were probably at one point in time like meat hook chains mm -hmm. hanging from the ceiling, um, mm -mm. dangling randomly throughout mm -mm. the room. Uh, but as you go, it eventually hits just a wall of fog. Um, <laughs> complete blinding fog. Yes, Sawyer? Um, as he's in this state, Sawyer is going to go over and poke him. Uh, you do as, feel a poke. As she pokes me, that's when Jared comes to me and goes, <sighs> <sighs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> now... I don't want to make any assumptions, but uh, that was very creepy. Jared, could, could you tell us what was happening? I, this is why you don't mess with demons. I, okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. Okay, I was, I was high above the factory. I saw, I, I saw something in the cattle yard. Um, there's, there's something downstairs. I, I don't know. Um, there's those rats. They, we, what the hell? Okay. Have you been Calm sleeping down. at all, Jared? Um, Are you all admittedly, dead, Jared? no, but oddly enough, I'm not tired because of it. So, uh, there, okay, there's fog. There's fog, I think, down. Well, there is a storm happening. No, 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 no. This is, this is something else. This isn't, why, why would it be uh, inside a building? Why would it now? I'll look over the rail and look down know. around and see if I can see this fog. If you kind of lower your head down, you can see just the lowest, maybe like bottom foot of this like fog wall almost. Um, since you guys live here, it isn't too uncommon for fog to just randomly appear. Most of the time it's while you're driving, there'll just be a, like, I don't know, on the side of the road, no, there's no just way. a cloud of fog that just like <laughs> rolls past you. <laughs> Uh, it happens in buildings sometimes. Like large buildings like this, kind of get their own ecosystem because of the humidity. Um, so a cloud inside of this room, not too weird, but strange. And is it like a cloud, or does it like have a clear line where it stops? Uh, it kind of rolls and steams out, but it is definitely this like curving wall. Um, hmm. It doesn't look like it's too willing to move. 
Well, while, while we're looking at it, does it look like there is a room behind it that it's kind of inside or just against a wall of the foundation? Uh, it's hard to tell how far back it goes. Um, against a, like it, it presses up against all of the walls. Um, but do you guys actually head down to look at the fog or are you just peeking over well, the like kind of railing? I think we're peeking for now, but yeah. we're gonna... just squinting at Jared. I take, there, like, I take a, out like a screw a... that I have yeah. in, my, in my pouch, and I just throw it at it. Uh, it hits the ground and kind of bounces into the fog. Bailey chuckles. Uh, <laughs> guys, you do realize that fog happens sometimes, right? Like, th right, this, this isn't that strange. Also, I it... know we're all jumpy, but... Considering the situation, Jared, I'd suggest you don't use the Lord's name in vain. I, I send. Um, I go. Yeah, I'll do that, Bailey. Um, and I, I, I'm gonna send the rats in. Yeah. And like, continue to recede back into their vision. By the way, they walk into the fog, and the moment that they go, maybe three feet in, it is just blinding whiteness. It's, hmm. like most mm -hmm. of the Midwest. Yeah, yeah right. uh, I want blinding ask, whiteness. I want to ask <laughs> questions, but I am not Jared. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so like blinding in the sense that I can't see vision. I have no vision ahead Correct. of me. Correct. Um, okay. It still smells the same from the mm -hmm. rat's point of view, um, but they keep running and about maybe 40 to 50 feet in, uh, the fog ends on the other side and there is a wall there. Um, there oh. are some doors and stuff on the other side of the wall. Mm. Um, I bring, I leave one of the rats there, post it up, staring <laughs> at yep. the doors, and directly from that rat, it, the other rat's gonna turn around, complete 180, and beeline it back to where he came from, to the end of the fog. 100%. Uh, the rat runs through for a while, once again, 50 feet, ends up on the other side. It does pass by Eugene's screw on the way out. <laughs> um, and it sits there, and it's going to like sit upright, and then just like turn around and point. <laughs> like It's going to be a point of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> out of 10, um, this ratatouille rat it, is yeah, pointing towards the it, fog. It, it, like, it, like, much like a beagle, just like pointer rats it, like, its nose <laughs> towards the other rat. Um, and go and Jared comes to you and goes. Okay. Sawyer's been poking him the whole time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he bats her away. He's like, Get, ah, hey. stop. Um, guys, I I think there, I think I found a clear path to the other side. Um, it's is there pretty anything? Fun. Is there anything else that we should look at before we go down there on this floor? Um, <laughs> I don't know, Sawyer. You're the expert about the supernatural, I mean, and I do this... think it, it would be wise to cover our bases and not leave any space unchecked. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Lead lead the way then. I'd like yeah. to go out of the office to that uh, bigger space that we skipped when we went inside. Uh, yeah. Um... Bailey follows with his light. The, uh, okay, so let me be clear here. So you went in, there was the packaging area, you went up the stairs. Um, the door below will lead into the kind of um, area with the fog wall if you're entering through the main area. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. then I thought that we, that there was a bigger space that we hadn't reached yet. And then we went into the office to take a look around. No, the office is above the bigger space. There's oh, the okay. catwalk that leads down and uh, there are stairs that lead down into this huge oh, well, um, then, like chained area. Well then in that case, why don't we just go straight there? I thought there was another part that we hadn't looked at yet. Nope. I, I very much it. agree with Bev. I, I suppose we better go down there and check it out. There's nothing else for us up here. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you guys head down um, these creaky metal steps. Um, this catwalk is a bit nicer than the ones in the main area. Um, you head down these creaky metal steps into the um, kind of like cutting floor um, where all of the meat would have been like cut up and, and packaged and whatnot. Um, sure enough, there are a few uh, remnants of machines still kind of sitting around here. But for the most part, it is just smooth like kind of yellowed tiles 
that were mm. probably originally white, um, <laughs> but over time have not maintained their luster. And sure enough, maybe 20 feet in, um, 20, 30 feet in, there's this huge towering wall of impenetrable fog and a little rat in front of it pointing into the fog. Well, I told you, see? Right, I, I believe you. Now, Bailey, would you shine your light in there and see see if you could see anything? Well, Anybody of else course, see the no point of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen weirder things recently, if I'm being honest. Could just be a well-trained rat. Um, your light hits the fog, and just as, like, when you turn your brights on, on a foggy night, just doesn't do anything. it just hits the wall and stops. <laughs> well, that's that's to be expected. This is pretty thorough. I'll, uh, I'll go over, and I'm just going to stick my bat in the fog and cast on me about uh your bat remains a bat and the fog moves as fog would when you switch a bat around in it what do you hmm. expect are we like wanting, wanting to go in right? here what are we wanting to do with this um sawyer do you get up to the uh up to the fog wall i will now <laughs> <laughs> um, with your passive perception of 16 um you do notice that so high above you um you can see where the manager's office would stop um but there are windows that cover the top end of this building um that have been kind of grayed out because of the um, storm and everything um as you approach the fog wall the window nearest to the fog wall just barely covered um so you can only see a sliver of it the light coming through it is orange Wait, where is it? Um, like high on the upper walls of these, uh, the cutting floor are these big glass windows. Um, where the fog wall is, it covers most of the window, but just the barest sliver of light comes through and it's orange. You guys, do you guys see that? The do you see? If you get next to the fog wall, you can see it. As you I'll all approach closer. the fog wall, um, to look up at the light, you hear a crack. Um, the same sound as when Sawyer stepped on the first step. I I uh, put my hand over my pistol. I, I look back at where that first step was. I, yep. I, uh, on the other side of this uh, of this uh, wall with the door in it that leads into the shipping floor. Uh, you can see that the double doors that would lead into here are um, padlocked, but you know that the door you came through to get here onto the catwalk is open. So, okay, just, so it sounds similar to the sound of when we were stepping on from where it came from, but it's yeah. not from That there. first kind of bent, uh, bent plastic stair on the other side and of the wall. So that's not within our vision right no, now. No, you cannot see oh, past okay. the wall. Sawyer's gonna I run and go look. I would like to investigate well, hold on. the padlock. No, Sawyer's running. Uh, Timothy, is that you? I'll go with Sawyer to make sure she's okay. Hundred percent. You guys run back up the stairs yeah, to the too. second floor. Um, it is completely empty. I oh, would God. like. Um, well, that's are strange. the are the double no, there's padlock nothing here. doors? Do they have a window? Or is it just? Uh, yeah, there is a there. It's actually more of like a plexiglass than an actual glass. Um, right. Kind of these. Uh, they would normally be swinging doors with like handles on them for easy movement in between with like uh, pallets or flats. Mm -hmm. um, but currently they are chained and padlocked shut, so you can't get back into the packing floor from the uh, cutting floor. Um, from the bottom like main opening, you can only go through the catwalk. Do I see any kind of silhouettes through the plexiglass? Uh, through the plexiglass, no. There are no. Um, there is no movement on the in the packing floor. All right. Well, All maybe right. the stair just got moved weird when we came in and it shifted back. I say we got to go through that fog. If if he's in here, then we got to go deeper. All right. Just I watch your step in the fog. After finding nothing. That... Sawyer's gonna come back. <laughs> Excellent. Um, are you guys <laughs> heading through the fog? I suggest that we enter in pairs and remain connected. Kindergarten feeling... line. Everybody grab a hand. I don't mind that at all. I grab Jerry's hand. 
Strong play. Bayla <laughs> slips in next to Beth. Doesn't make a big deal of it, though. <laughs> so Not a big just deal. Like, somebody, like that. anybody? Uh, yeah, I I'll, grab I'll, Bailey's okay. hand and Sawyer's hand. No. Okay. <laughs> and oh. then Crowbar is by himself. Uh, yep, and, and Crowbar just walks in by himself. No, Crowbar, no. the fog oh, no. grabs your hand. I have another hand. Yep. yep. No. <laughs> Sawyer, Sawyer has another hand. So my assumption, Bev, is that you want us to kindergarten. Are we? Field trip line it into I the fog. I have a feeling that that would be Not the in, safest way. Yeah, I okay. do think it'll be hard to okay. see while we're in there, and staying close together is probably the best idea. I, I, now forming the link, um, I put myself in front. Perfect. And I go, okay. and I go. I think, uh, I think a little friend here, and I gesture towards the rat that's still in like statue pointer pose. <laughs> <laughs> um. And like I think our I think our friend here wants us to uh go directly in that line and from what I saw, um it sounds about right, so I um, squeeze Bailey's hand gently. I say it'll be all right, Bev. <laughs> <laughs> ship is sailing. The ship is sailing. Oh please, um, Bailey. Bev's gonna take care of you. That's right. <laughs> I sense um, a, a theme here with the characters. I was going to say, I like that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> a long female character that doesn't need right. I, I don't know what you mean. Hannah just plays the top. <laughs> it's true. <Yes>. Hannah, <laughs> Hannah just plays herself. Yeah. It's true as well. <laughs> um, you guys kindergarten line your way into this fog. Um, the one who notices the biggest difference is actually Jared. Um, you walk maybe 10 feet into this wall of fog. Um, you are all linked together. But Jared, you notice that something is a little off. First of all, the whispering is a little bit louder now. I don't know. Um, but the biggest thing is you don't, you don't, don't like feel that. your bird or rats. Oh, no. I don't like that. <laughs> um, hey. Um, the other thing, Sawyer, you notice uh, this fog, like, it originally appeared like a blank white slate. Um, it is now tinted that same kind of yellowish orange color. Hmm. Um, as the light you can now see actually penetrates through the fog and kind of lights it up a little bit, you can actually see that it is it is independently moving more like smoke than fog. Like it, it almost has its own weight to it. Oh. Um, oh. Eggs uh, hut. <laughs> you two point oh. Can you all just make? Can you all just make a perception check for me? Okay. Just real, real <laughs> fast. Because <laughs> actually, I now, really remembered something is, I was going to ask, but it's fine. <laughs> oh, is, I'm is this with disadvantage since we can't see very well? Uh, no, because I I want you to make a perception check on the fog. All right. It's not, it's not fog. It's 16. 26. Um, 17. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, those of you vibes. with a 15 or above, um, you kind of notice that the way that the fog is moving, um, you kind of follow the path of it, and it kind of is swirling around a little shape on the ground. Mm. Um, r medium size. Um, as you get closer to that, uh, you realize that it is a humanoid. It is a person um, wearing a little uh, backwards baseball cap um, with uh, kind of brunette spiked hair. Um, he a once attempted frosted tips. Um, <laughs> Timothy Larson is lying on the ground. Now, just when we see him, does he look not alive? <laughs> Roll a medicine check. Okay. Does he look? Um, I'd like to help her with way? that. Yeah, that's doable. I'd Thank imagine you. we look more or closer. Thank you kindly. Timothy, that can you hear us? Closer. <laughs> that is a sixteen with uh, Bailey's help. You can see that the reason the fog is moving that way is that there is a barest little bit of breath that comes out of his body to kind of move the fog around. All right, all right. Sawyer's going to mutter a few things and cast Healing Word. Sounds great. Uh, you see, um, first of all, you kind of hear a brief little muttering from Sawyer, um, and you see 
almost like on the ground below him, there's a little brief puff of green as a tiny little dandelion sprouts below his body. Um, and he opens his eyes really wide and takes a big deep breath and looks around. It doesn't appear as though he can see you quite well just because of the fog and everything. And he just woke up, but he does. Uh, there is he doesn't make any noise. Just that quick inhale of breath, silence. Oh. All right, Timothy. Um, what what happened here? We are, are he hears you your voice, and he just holds up a hand, eyes wide. Oh, calm down, calm down. This we Bailey, this is Bailey, Bailey Patterson. He brings Bailey. a finger to his lips, and then he he points upwards. Um, look. Uh, above <laughs> you, <laughs> um, oh. hanging from the chains on the ceiling, um a hand grasping each one of them um, because instead of where its legs would be, there's just two more arms. Oh. Um, this larger than humanoid thing stretched back with, you can see the individual vertebra of its spine dangling above you from the ceiling is this thing. I wouldn't call it a humanoid because where its head would be there is just a stump and a hole that leads into its body. Get out my pistol. Um, you reach for your pistol and it drops from the ceiling. I shoot it. <laughs> I need uh, everyone to roll initiative, but more importantly, I believe this is where episode one will end. Hey. Ah. I'll see you all next week, um, if not a Timothy person gets, spirit. Timothy gets seven points. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Timothy oh is God. dead. Right. That brings him well above his max. <laughs> that is Fine. well above his max. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Well, I All guess right. I'll see you, friends, in the next episode. Yeah. Uh, right. Super excited. Great time. It's going to be great. Hopefully uh, we don't die. See you all next week, everybody. Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs>